Hi, my name is Gwen Peterson. I'm a certified independent health coach and global director with Optavia. If this is the first time you've stumbled upon my channel, welcome. Make sure to click the subscribe button so you get notifications every time I load a new video. And if this video ends up offering you value, please make sure to click the thumbs up button. And if you would like to see a little more about me and my life, because my YouTube channel is just about Optivia, come on over to Facebook. And I have a page that's called Optimal Health with Gwen, where I post personal stuff, baseball, volleyball, all those things along with Optivia stuff. And then, yes, I've started a TikTok. Um, and you can come on over to TikTok. It's not that a lot yet, but there's definitely baseball, volleyball, and like, things of what I eat in a day with Optivia. So today's video is bringing you along for the ride for me preparing for me leaving on Sunday for Mexico. And the fact that I'm already down 45 pounds, I don't want to derail what's gonna go on, but I'm also going to be on vacation. So this is not a typical five in one video because most people do, or Optivia video for that matter, because Optivia is just eating balanced every three hours whether you're doing the five and one, the four and two, or the three and three, whatever program you're doing, that's what our program is, is eating balanced every three hours. And most people that go on trips are either stick to what they're trying to do on the five and one or the four and two or the three and three, or they're totally off the rails. So I want to show you what my game plan is going into this week long trip. So you can just hear how as a coach, I navigate my own choices for my health and wellness on a trip. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy what I'm about to say. All right, everyone, as I said previously, this is not a normal Optivia video because this is just you guys getting a sneak peek into me as a coach, what I'm doing for going to Mexico. Um, we go every year, the last week at week of um, October, and we go with my parents and some other Optivia coaches, and we have a great time. But the thing that I realized is I really haven't purposely navigated what I wanted it to look like because I was either at my goal weight, so I was in maintenance, so choices didn't matter, or I was kind of like, ah, it's vacation. Comment below if you're that, ah, it's vacation person, right? Most of us are that way if we really haven't dialed into that mental component. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you, you'll hear that at the beginning of the year, when my health issues started resolving and I was able to start getting this extra weight off of me that's been put on with all these health issues, old habits die hard. And that's why we all have cuckoo brain. And I committed and I asked my clients to commit to listening to something every single day to rewire that brain. And so what I normally suggest is starting with the book, Chasing Cupcakes on Audible. And then once you're done with that, subscribing to her Primal Potential podcast in the podcast app on your phone and subscribing to our Optivia Habits of Health podcast or go to YouTube for the most recent ones. And now you can toggle every day with some really great content for your brain. So I knew that I was locking and loading and I needed to rewire the brain that has been telling me, well, you're sick, it's okay to eat this, which yes, I was, but now there's no excuses except the old excuses. So I committed to listening to podcasts every day or finishing Chasing Cupcakes and then the podcast. And there were days I'd flip it on four or five times because my brain likes carbs, who's doesn't? So now I'm going into this Mexico event where I'm down 45 pounds of the 50 I want to lose. So, or that I'm going to lose, it's just I have a trip involved. So I'm gonna navigate my plan and I know it'll be a little choppy, but I hope you just stick with me to hear what it looks like. And no judgment, please. Comment below, no judgment zone, before I say what I'm about to say because <laughs> of what I've done in the past. So. When we get there, we go down to Walmart or Costco and we have kind of a pattern of what we've always bought. So their milk, oh my gosh, in Mexico is so creamy and rich. It's amazing, right? So I would take bars and stuff with me, but I really didn't set my intentions 
of what I wanted to do and make a game plan. So that's why I'd always bring bars and then never eat them, right? So my mornings always consisted of, no judgment, their yummy milk and we would get a box of um, Fruit Loops and a box of, um, what is it? Frosted Flakes, right? Those are not really normal choices for me, but Mexico has different sugar cereals. So yes, I would start my morning with the thing that normally would throw me off on the rails when I was trying to be on program and cold cereal at night. That was kind of one of the things that I got to learn how to navigate. So I'd start my morning with that and then I wouldn't grab a bar, like when I'd finally leave our room and come down to the beach. So I would end up not eating from that breakfast that might have been at eight o'clock, which we know had no protein. So it only lasted an hour and a half in my body anyway, because protein lasts for three hours, carbs only last an hour and a half. So I never even realized that I was of course hungry. So then we're always watching for the little place, this is not an all-inclusive, that has a restaurant right there on the corner of where you walk down the stairs from the pool to where we are in the palapas under the you know palapas and they come they open at noon <clears throat> and they come down and ask us what we want to eat so we normally again no judgment <laughs> we always order my husband and me a plate of their most amazing nachos ever and a um a blt that they cut in fours. And so I would normally eat two, he eats two, and then we split the nachos, right? So that's a normal day. And of course, by the way, I don't drink alcohol, but their pina coladas are out of this world. So when I say, I want a pinata, they're like, pinata? And I'm like, yeah, no, no alcohol? Really? Pinata. But I have no idea how many calories are even in that non-alcoholic pinata that I normally have one or two of those while I'm sitting there every day, right? Are you guys starting to count up the carbs and the calories? Okay, so then we go to dinner and most of the places we go to, I love fajitas. So I normally will do the fajitas, but of course, cause I'm not focused, I will eat them in the tortilla shell and I'll eat the chips and salsa. But I, I wouldn't say eat the whole, well, I don't know. I probably do eat the whole basket. I don't know. Um, anyway, there's been no game plan of that. So yes, I do choose the thing that has protein, but guess what I'm doing? I'm packing the carbs from the chips in front of it, and then I'm putting it in that tortilla. And of course there's rice and all of that. So easily the dinner, air quotes, could be potentially balanced if I didn't eat a whole basket of chips and the tortilla with every little three strips of meat, right? So I guarantee my carbs at any dinner were probably easily at 75 to lucky if I was getting 15 grams of protein, right? So even though it's a healthy choice, the carbs were stacked high. And then wait for it. We would then, we every night, this is what we do, we go after dinner, we drive to the place that's down the road from our place, and we have gelato every night. And by the way, I don't love gelato. This is fascinating if you're staying with me with what this looks like. But of course, I eat a scoop or two of gelato every night because that's just what we do. Comment below if you are hearing what I'm saying about traditions, what we do, being a derailer, right? And I don't even like the gelato. I like it. I mean, if there was a Ben and Jerry's or a, um, or a, a Baskin Robbins, yeah, we'd be talking a different conversation here. So then, of course, because my body is so used to eating every three hours, that gelato is carbs. It's gone in an hour and a half. And we then go back to our room. We're hanging out. We watch a show on Netflix or whatever. And of course, the carbs are gone. So I'm hungry again. So I always finish my night with a couple of um, Chips Ahoy that are Mexican Chips Ahoy. So they're yummy. They don't, they're not like all processed because... They're not using flour that's genetically modified. That's a whole nother conversation. So they're good, but I'm still eating out of a package with another whole cup of that yummy fatty milk. No judgment zone, right? But I wanted to lay this out for you so you know what the tradition of the last six years has been, okay? So now, as I'm really navigating what I want it to look like, I'm not going to choose to stay on plan or stay balanced but I'm making some choices that will hopefully make sense to you. So let's start with when I wake up. Do I need to have that bowl of cereal? No. So I am taking shakes to make in my room and then, then that's an easy one for me because 
I can I can easily walk away from that breakfast thing. It's the after later stuff that str I struggle with. So shake in the morning, easy. But then I am packing cold blue packs. I don't know what they're called. And I'm bringing a Ziploc bag and I'm bringing one of my kids old insulated lunch boxes because I know I need a bar at that middle interim window between my breakfast shake and what we're gonna do for lunch. So, and it's super hot there. So I know I need the blue pack and I knew, know I need the lunch box in order for that bar not to melt. Could I eat a melted bar? I could, but hey, I'm planning ahead, right? So I'll, I'll do my shake in the morning, the bar mid afternoon, mid morning, and then I am going to eat the nachos and the uh, part of the BLT. But let me stop you right here because I know what I know. Normally that's massive carbs to tiny little strips of bacon and a little bit of uh, turkey, like not even close, right? So I am going to be going to Walmart today or GNC, I'm not sure which, and going and getting a protein powder that has like 25 grams of protein to only five carbs, right? Um, there's a lot of different brands, but that's one of those like, if, if in the States, and I don't know if in Mexico they have like Premier Protein bottles, so I'm just gonna pack my own powder just to make it easy. Now, again, this is not program, it's program. It's learning how to eat balanced. So I know that if I ate 12 of those nacho chips, and let's not even add in the, the um, beans that have more carbs and protein, the, luckily there's some cheese that's, that is protein, and then there's um, guacamole and uh, a salsa and all that, okay? So if I only ate 12 chips, that's 25 carbs. That shake is 25 protein, but there's five carbs. So I'm only getting 20 grams of protein against the 25 carbs. I'm already spiking my blood sugar. So what I know is that I am going to pack the protein powder and when they come and we order our food, I am going to make sure to have them, I'm taking my shaker bottle with me and I'm going to have them add ice and water and I'm gonna do two scoops of that protein shake. So now I'm at 50 protein to only 10 carbs. Are you guys following me? And I'm gonna shake it and I'm gonna pound it down because I have a method to my madness. So now if I'm up at 10 or 50 protein, 10 carbs, I have a 40 carb or 40 carb window I get to play with, right? Now again, are my calories gonna be through the roof? Yes, but I'm, my goal with this is going to be not spiking my blood sugar so that I don't gain eight pounds, I only gain three pounds, okay? So now, Yes, I'll probably do those 12 chips and I'll figure it out. And then, cry not loud, if you've done two scoops of a protein powder and then you eat 12 chips that have, that have salsa and all that, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to fit one of the four squares of the BLT, but let's say I do. Because it's that small, I know that that maybe will only be about 15 carbs by the end. So 25 from the chips, 15 there, boom. There's my 40 carbs. So now that protein shake with the two scoops is gonna counteract the 12 chips and the carbs of the one square of the of the BLT. All right, but then, and, and again, could I, the, I haven't equated in the uh, two, let's say the um, two of the, oh my gosh, my pina coladas. So really, as I'm thinking this out loud because I hadn't thought about that piece, I was planning to bring down one of our, our Optavia bars to pair, to just eat in the afternoon. But if I am choosing a pina colada, that our, our bars are already equal, so it won't give me wiggle room to try to counteract that pina colada, right? So I'm realizing as I'm saying this out loud, I either get to make myself another shake that's like, let's say one scoop, to counteract that drink, or maybe I go find a protein bar that has a lot of protein and low carbs, which tastes like chalk, but at least it's the counteracting thing. Again, because this is not the way to cheat, guys. This is the way to be conscious of your carbs and figuring out carbs versus protein so you don't gain a million pounds, right? So, and again, 
last year, I would have eaten half of those nachos and half of that sandwich, where now I'm gonna only eat 12 chips and a quarter of that sandwich. That's winning, you guys. So throw in the comments, I've never even thought of this before. If you're hearing me talk about the math and this is like eye-opening, okay? So then I'll figure out what I'm gonna do for that pina colada. And by the way, you guys, this is gonna be a massive amount of calories and a lot of protein. So guess what? I'm going to probably not be able to even fit a second pina colada in, right? Because I ate the protein with it. Where before, I would just do that lunch, it's gone in an hour and a half, a pina colada, well actually I drink a pina colada with it normally, and then another one mid-afternoon, right? So then, that's how I'm gonna navigate that. Then dinner, oh that's easy, right? Am I going to um, not eat the chips? Not at all, I'm for sure gonna eat the chips. But I've already talked to my husband about the fact that every restaurant we go to, I will be counting out 12 chips. And I've made a choice, so now there's no going back, right? So I will eat 12 chips, which again, let's say 25 car carbs, but then I'm still going to do those fajitas, but I'm gonna ask for double the steak. So now those that steak can counteract that carbs because you know when you go to a restaurant that fajita probably only has about 15 grams of protein and I need it to be 30 to counteract those 12 chips. And of course I'll eat the vegetables, but I won't be eating the rice and I won't be eating the tortillas, right? So that's how I'm gonna navigate that. Double meat, 12 chips. Follow with me and comment below if this 12 chips and the double the protein is fascinating you. Comment double chips or 12 chips if this is like interesting. So now we've done dinner and now we're moving on to the gelato. As I'm thinking this through, I don't even love the gelato, right? Like, why do I even eat that? So will I end up eating gelato? No, because I chose the carbs that I wanted earlier in the day, which was the pina colada, which was the nachos, all of that, right? So I am probably going to pack another bar with me to eat while everybody's at gelato. The old me would have felt deprived and oh, I'm on vacation, why am I eating a bar? Wah, wah, wah. Right, okay? But I've made a choice of what I want for my health and what I want that scale to do at the end of the trip. So I am choosing what carbs I choose ahead of the game, right? And I know many of you go on vacations and you don't really know what's gonna be in front of you, but you know anywhere you go, they're always gonna have protein and they're always gonna have the vegetables that you want. And so you just get to navigate around those. So now I can go to gelato every night with a bar and feel 100% confident that this is my choice that I'm moving forward with, not that old deprivation brain that I used to have because I've made that choice. So now I'll eat that bar and as long as I'm in bed within about two hours of going of eating that bar, I'll just go to bed because I know my blood sugar's stable going to bed. If I end up having a night that's late, which I normally don't, but let's say we decide to go out because, at, well, actually I might, because guys, by the way, go follow me on, on Facebook on that business page because the turtles are hatching, the baby turtles. And so we end up helping them again there's a turtle rescue right down the road and they've taught us everything to do. <laughs> so when people hate me, they're like, you're killing the turtles. I'm like, uh, yeah, no, the turtle rescue is teaching us what to do because there's so many turtles erupting. So if I end up at night going, cause you know, the turtles go toward the light, but all the resorts have lights. So these baby little turtles, sorry, this was a total derailer, go back to the little wall of the resort. There's all these baby turtles stuck going the wrong light. So if I end up late doing all of that and I'm up way late, I most likely will eat another bar or I will go and go, when we go to the store, I'll grab mozzarella cheese sticks and eat two because I know I want to go to bed with my blood sugar stable, not my blood sugar declining. I know there's different th schools of thoughts for that. What I'm going to tell you is this nutrition support used to say eat within two hours of going to bed. And if you're already done with your five and one, eat half of a lean, or a fueling. So you end up in a six and one, six and one, or five and one with half of a lane. I believe they might be giving different advice now. I don't know, I haven't called, but what I know is this is what I've done for eight years and it works. So I've kind of stuck with it. And then, you know, cause trying out loud, if you don't eat, guess what you're eating? The cold bowl of cereal, right? So that is my game plan over 
every day those seven days. And of course, I will be very focused on my water because I'm gonna be sweating. I'm also going to be bringing Propel packets to replenish those electrolytes I'm sweating out. And my water goal, which I'm not always the greatest at water, I normally try to stick with like 80 to 100 ounces, normally like 80. So my goal will be to be drinking 120 ounces a day to replenish the sweat, to help my body navigate all this protein, and then I'm gonna put some Propel packets in some of those waters just to replace those electrolytes. So anyhow, um, I I will do a follow-up video. I might even do some videos while I'm there. I haven't really decided yet because I did make a handful of videos when I went to Disneyland and did photos of every single thing I did and I post them, but they didn't get a lot of traction and it takes a heck of a lot of work to actually make those videos. So comment below if you would like me to make some videos while I'm down there so you can kind of see this because it takes a lot of work and if nobody sees them or comments on them or watches them, then I'm not going to spend the time when I get back. So anyway, um, I, I let me know if that's something you guys would like to do. Comment below. Yes, we'd like some Mexico videos and then I'll make some of those. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd bring you guys along for my plan because I've never planned like this before. I can easily navigate a weekend, right? And, but the thing about it is, is that, that Mexico is a week and are, is their guacamole better than anywhere I've had? Yes. Are the, I don't even ever have a virgin pina colada ever at home. So those are like the little treats, right? And and the other thing is they have a, a pineapple guy that comes and cuts the pineapple and all that. So if that guy comes around with that fruit thingy that we like, I will make sure that I'm I'm not eating a bar that day because that bar can't counteract that pi pineapple delight thing. I will have to default to that thing that the bar or the shake that I bring that's that protein and the low carb to just try to counteract that fruit thingy, right? So I know that this is fascinating probably to many of you because you're like, what? But as long as you can try to keep that blood sugar balanced, it's gonna help the scale in the long run because that protein helps break down and digest those carbs and burn them off instead of just eating and looking at the scale on Monday, right, when we get back. So um, I've never done this before. I know I can because I'm already 45 pounds down. I've just never really thought to put a game plan together. Just like if I was going to go to Italy, they have crepes, they have pastas, they have things that I would never have at home. So I would also, if I was going to Italy, figure out what I wanted to eat, but I would also make sure I have that safety nut of that higher protein thing in my pocket to counteract any choice that I want to eat because I wouldn't have that on a normal, you know, life environment kind of a thing. So anyway, um, comment below, let me know your thoughts. I know that this is not the normal thing, but I just wanted to teach you guys what me as a health coach who truly understands nutrition and the balance of what maintenance really looks like, what I'm just teaching you guys is what maintenance can look like and why it's not scary. You just need to know how to do second grade math to look at the carbs, pair it with the protein, done. And yeah, maybe I'm going to be at 1800 calories on the day and you can't be balanced and have 1800 calories and not exercise and not gain, right? It still comes to the calories in, calories out, but I'm willing to do that. I'm not going to go exercise a ton to try to work off the food because that's a whole nother cuckoo brain dialogue that use it to what, but you know, I'll be sweating, I'll be walking, all of that. So um, make sure to click the subscribe button so any future videos I do, you guys see. Then if this offered you value, click that thumbs up button. And then if you want to see those turtle videos and things like that, come on over to the, um, the, the page that I have on Facebook that is Optimal Health with Gwen. And then of course, I'm gonna use the time because I'm gonna be relaxing and all that to make some funny TikToks over there. So anyway, make sure to follow me follow the process and let me know what your thoughts are about this video. And my motto always is in health and life is just don't quit. Because if you quit on yourself, you quit on your health. Are you going to have some bobbles along the road? Yes. But if you think through what I just taught you guys, you have control of every choice you make. You just have to think it through and pre-plan. But if you are not dialing in on that mental component every day for 20 to 30 minutes while you're getting ready in the morning, letting it sit on your counter or your phone and playing, you will never have thought through what I just went through and you for sure won't make the choices you really wanna make if you haven't thought this stuff through. So comment below, let me know what you think, and I hope that this video offered you guys value, and like I always say, make sure to make it a great day.
बाय गाइस